When was the last time we saw you? Yeah, the um, uh, the acquisition really just happened this past weekend, so we're really at the earliest possible stages of it. Um, I think it's a uh, uh, the, the the ballpark at uh, McCoy Stadium is 73 years old. It's the o oldest one in the International League and one of the oldest ones in all of, all of baseball. Uh, so I think that uh, uh, a newer facility with uh, uh, state-of-the-art training uh, elements and uh, more uh, uh, even uh, some some new dimensions and, and all that could be a great thing for both Rhode Island and for the Red Sox in the training of our, of our players so it's a uh, it's a positive uh, uh, step I think for the Red Sox and I think it will prove to be for Rhode Island as well Get, uh, I'm sorry? What drew you to get kind of personally interested in this? Well, we've been involved in it for a couple of years. I mean, the Red, Red Sox uh, and, 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 uh, uh, were approached uh, by Mrs. Mondor a couple of years ago uh, about uh, our interest in it. And the relationship had always been so good that um, uh, we wanted to maintain that after uh, Ben's uh, passing and Mrs. Mondor's uh, uh, selling of the team. And so uh, the Red Sox looked into it, and uh, we decided that it was either something that should be sold to the Red Sox or to a group of people hyper-friendly to the Red Sox so that we could take that, take it to the next level. And they've got a very experienced, uh, talented uh, uh, set of executives down there. So we, uh, uh, that it's the really, but it really started, I think, in John Henry's living room about uh, two years ago. How comfortable are you that people remain in the Rhode Island area? How comfortable am I? How comfortable are you? That well, I mean, I, that's certainly the plan. Uh, absolutely, we'd like it to. Uh, uh, the Rhode Island fans are sort of second to none in terms of their passion for the Red Sox. So we can take that to new levels as well. I think if we do, if we do it right. Larry, how did you? Yeah, it was a, a, a stupid motorcycle accident in Northern California. I was riding the coast of California with a, a friend of mine and uh, went out on a cattle guard. <laughs> Sorry? No, we were north of San Francisco up towards Point Reyes and uh, Montesino. Besides the Tom, what are your other Tom, let's see. Um, I got a couple of ribs and a uh, uh, collarbone and uh, um, what else, a gash in the knee, sprained ankle. 15 DDL, 60? Sorry? 15 DDL, 60 day DL? Oh, no, I think it's, uh, it's a 30 day DL, I hope. Okay. Right, can you talk I a little bit about your role still with the organization? Then? Um, your I actually, I think uh, um, 
Tom and John are probably the best ones to talk about it. To me, it's a uh, uh, it's not there's not much of a story uh, there, uh, um, and but you're better off hearing it from from Tom or, for, or from John. Uh, Mike Gordon's role has evolved over time, to to be sure. Uh, but uh, I was just saying to Tom that there was two years ago when we were down here talking about Dustin Pedroia's contract, and Tom and uh, I and uh, Mike Gordon and uh, uh, Dustin's representatives had a dinner together. So he's been involved in things uh, uh, over uh, over the years, but it's gotten, uh, uh, so I, I really don't think there's Is that Mike calling? Yeah, that might be Mike Gordon. <laughs> Let me see if that is. Uh, hang on, I'm sorry, I forgot to turn it off. I'll do that now. Uh, you know, I think a lot has been made of this story, but uh, basically uh, John and, and Larry and I have the same relationship uh, today, in our 14th year as we had uh, when we started in 2003. So uh, Mike has a, uh, a, a significant role at FSG. Um, that really does not impact uh, the Red Sox very much. Uh, he's got a, a more important role in Liverpool, um, but he's a very valuable partner. Uh, we also see counsel we haven't talked about this much from a lot of our partners. A lot of our partners are very astute, uh, and they uh, give us advice in a whole bunch of matters. But as regarding the Red Sox, it's the same uh, structure. And then the other thing is it's a very collegial structure. So uh, when we uh, are talking about uh, important decisions, we welcome uh, smart input from Mike and, and other partners as well. Tom, the, the club directory of, of uh, officers and executives now this well, I didn't. Talk structure, I, I, that's a fair question. I didn't actually see. It's not like I have reviewed the club directory. Uh, it probably was a mistake um, because, um, as I said, it, we don't have an FSG masthead. We should have created one, but. Uh, I really do think it's a bit of a tempest in a teapot. And that was not a club directory. It was a, a listing, uh, I think, put out by by the central office trying to figure out where FSG goes and where the Red Sox go. The official club directory comes out in the press guide, uh, which is due out in a week or so, I think. Larry, is your role any different when it comes to baseball decisions? No. It's a, if anything, it's uh, uh, we, we have the advantage of a of uh, a, an additional voice. For example, we're talking about Pedroia. Mike, Mike's a very astute guy when it comes to uh, financial matters, present value calculations, structure of contracts, and uh, and, uh, and he was very uh, helpful in that. Uh, as Tom said, this is a this is a team, and it, things evolve. And some in some days, some guys are involved, and some days others are more involved. It's a uh, it's not really a, a, any kind of power structure. That's just not the right way to read it. With so many voices, Larry and, and Tom involved in the organization, decision-making baseball and otherwise, is it a bigger challenge today than it was years ago? No. Boy, I think you should just look at our, our track record for 14 years rather than hear me say things about how we're doing or, or, or how, uh, how well it works. Uh, I think that uh, that it works. As Tom said, it's a collegial uh, group. It's uh, uh, We operate with uh, uh, a lot of debate and, uh, and dialogue and uh, the proof is in the pudding. You know, and I don't think there are too many voices as you put it, Mike. I think it's a very uh, collaborative group and again, you know, there are a lot of things that uh, we probably don't talk about. There, uh, all of us are involved in league matters. Um, I think the Red Sox play a significant role in uh, a lot of the issues that come up uh, that are, are league issues, whether they deal with issues like uh, pace of play or BAM or uh, trying to bring in a new generation of fans. So, you know, I think that. Uh, we bring a lot to the table, and I think it's good for our fans. I, I think that's a good example. Uh, uh, Tom and Mike uh, have been involved uh, for a, c a couple of years in trying to uh, um, uh, reform uh, aspects of the game, day-to-day uh, -day practices and speed of game, uh, pace of game, uh, length of game, and that's been going on. So uh, all I'm saying is I, I can understand the, the interest in palace intrigue. There just isn't very much palace intrigue to uh, to report, and uh, and uh, that uh, Mike's uh, role has, as I said, devolved over time and uh, plays a, 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 a very helpful role, as do other partners, as Tom pointed out. Can I just clear up? So, is it correct that FSG is the parent 
company of the Red Sox. That's correct. That's correct. And Mike is the president or CEO of FSG. The president. He's the president of FSG, yeah. Tom, are you saying it's a mistake that his name is higher in the guide now than... Uh, I think that that uh, in the I, Red Sox guide, in something that's supposed to talk about the Red Sox. Yeah, I think that uh, we didn't see. I mean, I, I've never even seen a masthead in my life till it was shown to us last night. And it, that he, 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 Mike, is involved with FSG, and Larry. You know, I, I don't want to argue about whose name is above whose, but that was a mistake that we we're going to uh, correct. Tom, uh, you want to Yeah. yeah. This Um, I was actually out of the room, but I know that John and Larry met him. And there's no intrigue in that. Tom did meet him, and, and I did meet him, and that didn't mean anything. <laughs> I do want to clarify that we have not a signed deal with with uh, right. Yolan, so. Pending the correct? Yes. Uh, I wonder if both of you could discuss from an ownership standpoint uh, the process. Uh, I mean, you shattered all records for the signing of an amateur player, either international or here. Uh, from an ownership standpoint, uh, what goes into making that decision? How difficult a decision uh, is it to make? Uh, from your standpoint, how much risk is it? Well, the first thing is that we have to have, and we do have great faith in our baseball operations people. Uh, Eddie and Ben and uh, the staff all had a very, very strong uh, review and recommendation for this player. Um, they all felt that uh, if he uh, was uh, a uh, amateur uh, player in the draft, that he would go very, very early. You know, I'm not saying 1-1, one, one, but he'd go very early. So, you know, in a, in a situation like that, we, we put a lot of weight in the recommendation of our baseball ops people. And uh, we felt like uh, we wanted to uh, uh, have depth in our organization. That's very important to us. This is one way of adding depth. I know some people have said, well, what does that mean? you know, in terms of other players on the uh, present roster, but you can only be stronger by having a great minor league system, and that's where he's going to start, and then we'll take it from there. I don't think it's out of character uh, for us to uh, invest uh, heavily. In 2003, with the disappointing season, we uh, increased our payroll about $35 million the next year because we didn't want to finish second. In 2006, we increased our payroll uh, about 30 or 35 million dollars. So we have invested in in the future, and many times it's worked out in the short term. Uh, sometimes there are longer term investments, and uh, uh, but we have been doing this since the beginning, and we've been talking about a commitment to winning. So it it, it sometimes gets a little uh, uh, frustrating uh, that we we can't communicate more effectively the fact that. Uh, we are willing to sacrifice uh, some profits for uh, for a winning baseball team. For, for either one of you, there, there have been reports about uh, the Red Sox having some interest in playing an exhibition game in Havana, and uh, as recently as a year ago, there was some, at least the consideration of maybe opening a season somewhere in the Far East. Can either of you address the club's appetite for some international uh, well, you know, Larry is head of the international committee, so you want to answer Sure, that? sure. I, I'm uh, under the Manfred regime. I'm the, the uh, chairman of the international committee, and I can assure you that, uh, that uh, the new commissioner, uh, like the old commissioner, is uh, dedicated to international growth and development, and all of those ideas have been ideas that I've heard, too. Uh, I don't think there's uh, time to... Uh, to, for there to be a uh, kind of Cuban uh, exhibition game this year, but uh, I'll let the Central Baseball address that issue. But uh, I think you will find a more aggressive, a more um, uh, expansive uh, focus on international growth, development, play over the course of the next uh, several years. I think we've been in a kind of uh, on the runway, and I think we're ready to take off to for for larger, uh, larger um, skies. And, and as a relates to the Red Sox specifically, do you have an interest in taking part in that and playing games either in Cuba or in the Far East? Yeah, we have made that clear during the time we've been here because we, we did go to Japan in uh, was it 2008, I think, yeah. And uh, so we, uh, yeah, we've always been a, a team with a, uh, uh, an aggressive foreign policy. And we think that uh, baseball should have uh, an aggressive foreign policy too. So uh, we'll do uh, what's what's asked of us, and we'll prod uh, along the way for for more international activity and growth. 
Yeah. Sorry, I asked you at this moment just a little out of your way to point out the differences between the way the Yanks do business and you guys do. And do you think your model in the last six months is more like old Yankee-like? <laughs> oh boy, it never, there, there, there's so many things you could get me, uh, actually maybe you couldn't, but there are a lot of things that people could get me to say, but I could, uh, uh, I could never admit to, to, uh, to, to, to that, uh, not, in, not in my own mind at least. Uh, we, we, are, we, are, uh, we are different, we run our franchises differently, and, uh, but the, there is a commonality in, in, in our willingness to invest in, uh, in, in sizable sums in, uh, in, in baseball players. Uh, whether they be short-term uh, additions or long-term development projects. So in that sense, we like the, uh, the, the Dodgers, like the Giants, like a lot of uh, successful uh, clubs are willing to, uh, to, to pay the price and, and write the check. You guys met with the team this morning. What was the message this year to the players? Well, Tom actually uh, uh, spoke uh, to, to, the, to the players uh, today. And um, the meeting really belongs to the general manager and to the manager, and we sort of sit on the side and uh, r rotate among ourselves uh, uh, who gets to say a few words. And uh, we spoke about the commitment to winning. Tom, I'll let Tom. Uh, I, I, well, as Larry I, said, it really is uh, John and Ben's meeting. Um, we introduced ourselves to the players who have not been here before. Um, as, as Larry said, uh, we do have a, a strong commitment to winning. Uh, John said it, I think, uh, eloquently yesterday. Said that you know we we play for championships. Uh, we we were all smarting over uh, the uh, finish that we had last year, and uh, I think there's a great group of uh, mix between veterans and younger players in camp this year, and uh, I feel a, a great sense of uh, optimism from John and the uh, coaching staff and. Uh, Beyond that, you know, we look forward to opening day here. Yesterday, the Wall Street Journal had a column, an article about potentially cutting back the season to 154 games. Do you have thoughts on that, and do you think that's a real possibility? Well, I know that this is something we've talked about. Uh, Rob is open. Rob Manford is open to it. Um, I think that's uh, an idea that is under review. I think that what's exciting about uh, Rob's tenure so far is that uh, a lot of, of uh, things are under review that uh, can advance the game and uh, you know I can give you my personal opinion about it but I think that uh, the game uh, needs to be modernized a bit and um, that would be one thing to, to seriously examine. How do you both feel about uh, a system going back to Moncada where a player not subject to the draft can receive so much more in a bonus than, than someone domestic? Well, uh, there are a lot of strong feelings on that subject within the game. Um, some people favor an, an, an international draft to uh, level the playing field, so to speak. Um, that's sort of above uh, our pay grade. That's a, 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 a CBA issue that has to be addressed. But we'll play by whatever rules there are and try to adv take advantage of uh, whatever we can uh, for on behalf of the Red Sox. Uh, but I do think that some, there's a, a lot of sensitivity to that issue on both baseball's uh, side and the, uh, the Players Association side. So we'll see. The next CBA is coming up pretty soon. We'll see what happens. Tom, you've been very involved in the pace of play discussion for a couple years now. Did you feel Major League Baseball did enough as a first step issue? Uh, I'm really pleased with the progress that we've made in the last few months. Uh, you know, uh, I was talking to someone in Central Baseball and they were saying how uh, uh, much of a partnership Tony Clark and the Players Association has with us on this issue um, because in the end we've got to get the players to be uh, in lockstep with us on this. Um, I'm looking forward to some of the changes that are going to happen in 2015 um, and as, as we know there is uh, going to be a big between inning clock which I think is going to uh, speed up the game and uh, there are some additional changes, as you know, in the minor leagues. So, uh, all in all, I think that we've made a great, a great, uh, great progress in the last few months. So, I'm really uh, pleased that uh, we uh, we're at the point we are right now because I thought it was going to take longer to get to this point. Larry, it's been a pretty epic winter, obviously, and very recently in the last five weeks. 
Fenway, you know, you have no worries that Fenway will be ready and, and up to speed by the time. Uh, no, I mean it certainly is not ready now, and there's plenty of snow there. But uh, no, it'll be it, it it will be it will be ready, and there are uh, some new improvements that we've uh, uh, put in this year that I think will uh, will be will be there on time. So uh, we'll make it unless we have another month of snow, which is I suppose uh, the all bets are off on that. But the, the probabilities of that are remote. Larry, back to the off for a second. In your career, you sort of taking a great joy and love in the team building, ballpark building, all of that. Is that part of the involvement with the Paw Sox kind of passion? Yeah, absolutely. First, the idea that a a great uh, major league franchise should have a great relationship with a a, um, high-quality AAA franchise uh, is part of what motivates us uh, from the Red Sox point of view and from my point of view. But also the idea of uh, of uh, being able to advise uh, on a on a new ballpark and have the Red Sox uh, uh, resources and personnel to participate in the uh, in the structure and design of a new ballpark, it was part of the uh, the appeal and the idea of doing something uh, in uh, I guess another American city. This would be the fifth ballpark I think I've worked on counting counting this one down here. That's uh, that's very appealing. Yeah. Any message to the fans of Rhode Island about? Uh, we want, yeah, we uh, we want to maintain uh, the great relationship that existed under the Mondors. We didn't want someone to come in and and change that dynamic, and uh, and uh, we uh, we recognize what our responsibilities uh, will be. So um, uh, have faith in us. We'll uh, build the right kind of facility in the right place, and we'll do it collaboratively with the elected officials of the state. Yeah, what, would you, what, would that, what would that mean to you to be part of the five facilities in Miami? It's a point of pride. I mean, I, I think it would be a point of pride to to have done it, do it in another American city in terms of something that uh, served as a catalyst for the development of a downtown area. It's very rare in the eastern part of the United States to have a chunk of land right downtown, five minutes from downtown, um, where you where uh, a ballpark could be built. Most of uh, the Eastern American cities are so congested downtown, this opportunity doesn't exist. So there's a, there's a great one for Rhode Island. When you look at the performance of the team on the field the last three years, there's obviously a great variance. Last World Series, last again. Uh, given the resources the team has, how do you explain that and what do you do to, to achieve more consistency going forward? Um, well, first of all, you're right. The consistency is important. and, and it's our intention to play baseball in October every year. Uh, we, we know that we made some mistakes last year, and those mistakes were compounded by injuries. You know, I looked at the, at the group this morning, and I saw a, a healthy Mike Napoli, and I saw a healthy Shane Victorino, and a healthy Dustin Pedroia. So I, I think uh, health is really a, a key component of consistency. but. Uh, Certainly part of, of what we're encouraged about is that there's a depth in our minor league system that uh, can be uh, constructive if, if we uh, have some uh, injuries at the major league level. But you're right. I mean, our, our, our intention certainly is not to have the, the yo-yo that was the last three years. But I would, can I just add, add to Sean, um, uh, as John Henry said so well yesterday and Tom quoted earlier, uh, we're in. We we're, we're in it to win it. We're in it to win championships. And if that means this kind of uh, uh, manic depressive kind of course, that's uh, that maybe that's not so terrible. We're not in it to be consistently second or consistently third. We want to win championships. And uh, um, so uh, I, I hope that offers some perspective on it. Tom, I guess on that subject, John said yesterday he felt like the organization was in the best shape it's ever been. Well, you guys have been to the playoffs one time in the last five years. How do you sort of <laughs> well, I look at it that we've won uh, three championships in the last ten. Uh, I think that uh, when I look at, at the group of players this year, um, I think it, it gives me a very uh, uh, feeling similar to 2013. Um, and um, you know, our timeline obviously is is to win this year and to be competitive this year. But I think we're going to be stronger for a, a long period of time. And I know John was talking uh, about uh, the, the 
depth of the front office as well. The 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 coach the the coaching staff, the manager, the general manager, the stability and continuity that exists there, the uh, the the depth around the front office, the fact that we have uh, a lot of people who have been in place for a long time, the uh, the uh, the harmony that exists with respect to governance. I think he was referring to uh, all of those all of those things, and and looking about where we go from here. That we're well we're, we're well prepared to uh, to be a successful franchise in the next several years. Is it bothersome that, that, that that harmony hasn't translated to more success on the field? Uh, you say more success on the field. Uh, you know, it's a uh, three and three and ten years uh, it used to be a, a matter of some pride. Uh, yeah. Um, um, well, you know, you got you've got to have other things too. That's not enough, but that can be a significant impediment if you don't have that kind of uh, um, that kind of internal compatibility. Larry, 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 Sorry, putting aside the notion of the palace coup, uh, you have a milestone birthday coming up. How much longer, by choice, do you envision? Did my wife ask you to pose to put that question <laughs> in there? Uh, um, uh, I don't know. That's a good question. Uh, I, I guess you're referring to seventy. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, uh, at some point I'm going to slow down, and uh, but uh, we'll, we'll just take it uh, uh, year by year, which is, what, which is what we've been doing for the last few years. I've uh, uh, taking it year by year. Does the thought appeal to you? Does it scale back a little bit? Scale back uh, appeals to me. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, uh, dropping uh, off the face of the earth doesn't appeal to me. Yeah, uh, you know, it's uh, it's about being active and doing things and continuing to do things. So. Uh, um, I can see. I can see that day will will come. Sure. Thank you, guys. Thank you. God, am I like seventy years old? No. <laughs> <laughs> People think I'm mocking you. I thought you were too. No, I was first. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I don't